morning, everyone. Good morning. As well, we begin on page six. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace with his people on Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb. God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> You touch us, O God, with living fire of your holiness. And though we are not worthy of it, your grace has called us into your church to speak your word and tell of your glory throughout the whole earth. Keep us mindful of what you have wrought in us. Make your church a sign of reconciliation, a place of welcome and friendship for all. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. <clears throat> Isaiah has a vision of a heaven and earth united through God, enthroned on his temple while expressing his feelings of unworthiness in sharing these visions from God, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in, in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole world is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called. And the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, 
send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll pray the gradual psalm responsively, dividing it the half verse. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. Because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name. And your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. When they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord. That great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O oh Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. <clears throat> Paul describes himself as unworthy of his call since he had persecuted the followers of Christ. But since Jesus appeared to him and so many others, through God's grace, he became able to proclaim the gospel. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles. I'm fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the sequence hymn, um, I uh, made a mistake. So what we will do, we, we will sing verse, the first English verse before the gospel and the second English verse after the gospel. So. <laughs> down to the lake shore seeking neither the wise nor the wealthy but only asking for me to follow oh jesus you have looked into my eyes kindly smiling You've called out my name On the sand I have abandoned my small boat Now with you I 
will seek other seas. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. But yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. You know full well my possessions. Neither treasure, nor weapons for conquest. Just these my fish nets and will for working. Oh, Jesus, you have looked into my eyes. Kindly smiling, you've called out my name. On the sand I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you I will seek other seas. <clears throat> I'd like to begin today with... Uh, this tongue-in-cheek uh, thing that I ran across in preparing for today. Some of you may have heard or read something like this uh, in other times. It's addressed to Jesus, son of Joseph, Woodcrafters Carpenter Shop, Nazareth, State of Galilee, Kingdom of Herod. Dear Sir, we are pleased to have reviewed the resumes of the 12 men you have picked for management positions in your organization. They have taken our battery of psychological tests, and our vocational counselors have interviewed each one. It is our staff's professional opinion that most of your nominees are lacking in background, education, and vocational aptitude for the enterprise you are undertaking. They are not team players. We recommend that you continue your search until you find better qualified candidates. And then they single out, Simon Peter is emotionally unstable and given to fits of temper. Andrew has absolutely no qualities of leadership. The brothers, James and John, place personal interest above company loyalty. Thomas demonstrates a skeptical, questioning attitude that would tend to undermine morale. 
our investigators have discovered that the Jerusalem Better Business Bureau has an inch thick file of ethics complaints against Matthew concerning his former employment as a tax collector. James, son of Alpheus and Thaddeus, definitely have radical leanings and both register a low score on tests of psychological stability. Only one of your candidates shows high potential. He is a man of ability and resourcefulness. He meets people well, has a keen business mind, and has contacts in the highest places. He is highly motivated, ambitious, and responsible. Therefore, we recommend Judas Iscariot as your chief operating officer. Wishing you every success in your new venture, the Jordan Management Consultants. Had Jesus set out to found a smoothly functioning global nonprofit, he surely could have picked better people. But Jesus didn't set out to create an organization. He came into the world like his cousin John as a witness to testify to the light. Those who saw divine light reflected in his face followed him. By the power of the Holy Spirit, those feeble disciples did the most outstanding things, amazing even themselves. Well, I thought I might get a little more reaction out of that. But uh, it appears in various times and ways, but... Each of the scripture readings today highlight something about call and response. The reading from the prophet Isaiah, we have this priest in the temple, and he has the vision of all of these things that are going on, that God's presence there, and he sees angels, and, and he, he just is overwhelmed by this vision that he's having of God's presence and magnificence and, and everything that goes along with it. And when he comes to realize that this vision is so powerful and that he is seeing this glory of God, he's petrified because he figures that he's going to die because you can't see God and live. And so he says, woe is me, I am lost, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. We have to remember that in Jewish understanding and piety, they could not presume to look on God's face and live, or even God's glory, and remember even when uh, Moses, as close a relationship as he had with God, was granted God, by God to see him, he could only see his back as he passed by, could not look at his face. So there's that long tradition of seeing, if you come to see an angel or some other experience of the presence of God, you're terrified because you figure that you know, your life is now at an end. But Isaiah doesn't experience that. Instead, God speaks to him. And the seraph, one of the seraphs, brings the coal and touches his lips. And then we hear, now, this, that, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then the Lord says, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. This chapter doesn't come at the very beginning of Isaiah. It's chapter six. Already Isaiah has begun in the prophecy speaking to the people about what God wants for them and how they have been disappointing God, how they have not been living the commandments, how they've not been living out the, tech, the technicalities of the covenant, but they've been going their own way. And so now his mission is confirmed by this vision 
And he knows now that the words that he's going to speak to them are not going to flow from unclean lips, but rather they're going to be God's words to this people that he is supposed to speak. And that now has become his call, his vocation. Nothing else in his life now matters but that. And then Paul. We know from various parts of the New Testament the elements of Paul's conversion story. And we know that Paul at one point is just out to get any Christian at all and throw them in jail and hopefully see to their execution. But we know that he has that experience on the road to Damascus. It's in, I believe, chapter 9 of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. And he talks about it elsewhere in his letters. But that becomes the pivotal experience of his life where he is blinded by the light and he beholds Jesus. The other people with him see the light, hear the voice, but they don't see Jesus. But Paul does. And Jesus asks him, why are you kicking against the goads? It hurts to do that. Why are you persecuting me? And of course, Paul is so overwhelmed by this. And again, because he sees Jesus, and in this moment, he believes it's a divine encounter. He's also scared out of his mind that this is the end. Especially when Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? But instead, Paul gets a mission. And like Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. This is after some time of having been called and having gone through already a number of challenges and, and uh, experiences of, of uh, danger and rejection that he comes to this awareness that this what has enabled him to move from the persecutor to the proclaimer to move towards loving the people that previously he hated was all because of the grace of God given to him. And then he's given that mission to go and to evangelize the Gentiles. Others could evangelize the Jews, but his mission, because he was so easily rejected by his own, the Lord sends him to the Gentiles. And we know what Paul's journeys did. And we have one of the letters to the Corinthians today as a proof of that. All the churches he established, all the communities that he dealt with, all the problems that he addressed himself to, to keep them on the right road. And so that they would also be able to experience among themselves, not necessarily a vision, but the power of God and the wisdom of God in Christ and come to new life in him through water and the spirit. And then in today's gospel, of course, this famous episode and Peter realizing that this is no ordinary guy here, not quite ready to make the step yet to claim he's divine. But they know, he knows, and the rest of them are aware, there's nobody to mess around with. And he's scared too. But you know, depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. And instead, Jesus reminds him that he doesn't need to be afraid because from now on, he's going to be catching people and the others around him as well. And as it says at the end of the gospel, when they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed them. This powerful experience of God in the lives of Isaiah and Paul and Peter and the other beginning group of the apostles shows that those that God calls are not necessarily those, as we heard in that passage I read to you, not necessarily those whom others would say are the best and the brightest. 
we've all been called by virtue of the gift of faith, by our baptism into Christ's death and resurrection. We've been called and given a mission. Some of us are called into ministries of leadership in the congregation. I've been called to the ministerial priesthood. All of us have called to the baptismal priesthood by virtue of our baptism into Christ's death and resurrection. We have various gifts. Some serve on vestry, some have served on vestry. Others serve in other ways, in positions of leadership or just part of the, of the worshiping community. But no matter what our particular call is within the community of faith, we have a mission that's been entrusted to us. And again today, when we prayed our mission prayer, we're reminded of what we're asking God to give us so that we can be a transforming light within our parish and within the community. But this is the call we've received, not because we're perfect, and certainly not because we are the best that he could have called. But he called us because he loved us first. And that's the thing we always have to go back to. God loved Isaiah as Isaiah was. And as Paul was, God loved him with all of his faults and all of his strengths. And the Lord Jesus knew when he called the apostles that they were ordinary people. They were not extraordinary in any way except that he saw their hearts and he knew what they were capable of doing, even Judas. They're all called as they are and invited to grow, invited to change, invited to become able by his grace and his forgiveness and his love and mercy, the kind of people that they were created to be in the first place and the people who could carry out for the sake of their brothers and sisters, the mission entrusted to them. And that's you and me together too. We've been called. We have been chosen. We have been gifted by the Holy Spirit with certain abilities and talents, whether they are at this time for our home, or for our workplace, in raising the family, or uh, carrying out a particular job, or like for here in the parish, in a position of leadership or involvement in some group. But all of us, whatever our gifts and talents are, have the basic call to be God's holy people. That's what it's ultimately about to grow in holiness, which means to grow in the likeness of Jesus Christ, and that our lives become more and more like the life of Jesus. We're never going to measure up fully because we're human beings, and we know we are weak, and we know that we fall short, we know that we sin, but that doesn't stop God from loving us any more than God stopped loving Isaiah, Paul, or Peter, even after Peter denied him, and even after the other apostles other than John ran away. He hasn't turned his back on us when we've fallen away. Maybe we've spent a period of our life way far away from God, and now here we are, brought in through whatever means of, you know, some people a direct way, some kind of a, you know, so not sort of yeah, an indirect way. But here we are. And the Lord today reminds us again, we've been called and chosen to be his holy people. And to continue to grow in that holiness so that we can carry out the work that we have been given to do. Which is to make Christ present through our words, through our actions at home, in our workplaces, where we congregate with other people, wherever we find ourselves. And that we become 
that loving, compassionate, merciful presence of Christ through what we say and what we do. To remind us today of our call and to remind us that the Lord is with us and goes with us. We, he gives himself to us again in Holy Communion to accompany us, to strengthen us, and to, again, remind us of just how important we are. Who we are is the body of Christ. What we receive is the body of Christ so that we can continue to become the living presence and body of Christ wherever we find ourselves. <clears throat> Let us now stand to profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed at the bottom of page 12 of the bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, trusting in our great creator, let us pray for the needs of the church, the world, and our needs. Bless the people of this diocese, O lover of souls. Call us to greater devotion and service. We thank you for the communities in which we live and work and worship. We thank you for the Anglican Church of Ireland, its archbishop, bishops, clergy, and laity, congregations in the Chicago North Deanery, Church of Our Savior, St. Chrysostom, St. Paul's by the Lake, St. Peter, and St. John. We thank you for our companion diocese, Jesus of Nazareth, Twistepec, Southeast Mexico, <clears throat> and St. Mark, Galhek, Rink, South Sudan. Fan the flame of your Holy Spirit within us that we may set, we might be set ablaze with the fire of your love. God of grace. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Make known your ways of justice and truth, almighty God. Bring the powers of the world to their knees, especially at this time in the Ukraine, and establish your kingdom of peace on earth. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Loving creator, do not abandon the works of your hands. Sustain this planet and all its creatures. Give us creative minds and generous hearts as we live and move within your creation. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We thank you for those in our parish celebrating birthdays this week. Reynold Devaney and Christopher Cole. Are there any birthdays or any other birthdays or anniversaries? Make us witnesses of your love and faithfulness, God of grace. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you care for the lowly. You hear our cries of mercy. You increase the strength of the weak. 
We pray for all those names who all those whose names are found in the intention books on the intercessory prayer list and those listed in today's bulletin. Those in the armed forces who are far from family and in harm's way, and those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom we now pray. Let us remember, especially those affected by the severe <laughs> winter weather throughout our country for their protection and relief. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your love endures forever, and so we pray for those who have died, especially for the very Reverend Judith Dalmaso, Reverend Gail Vince, Sabina Wolf, Kathy Schreiner, Eldon Huber, Joanne Corey, Donna Gromes, and all those departed ones we would like to mention now. God of grace. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Inside the front cover of the bulletin, you find the mission prayer. Loving God, through your grace, guide us, the people of Calvary Episcopal Church, to joyfully carry out our mission of growing faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may develop a living faith that deepens our understanding of you and strengthens our awareness of the needs of others. May we be a transforming light within our parish and within the community. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor kneeling if you're able to. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> <clears throat> Please be seated. First, I'd like to welcome our visitors who are with us here today, and uh, would ask you a favor. I ask ask you to do us a favor. That at the end of the pew, there's probably an envelope. If you would put your name and contact information on that envelope uh, so that we can properly acknowledge your visit. Uh, so we thank you for being with us today. We're presently not having hospitality following our services because of the COVID restrictions, but we hope that those will go away just like all the other restrictions uh, as soon as reasonably possible. Also, the altar flowers today are given by Kathy and Jim A.C. in loving memory of Kathy's parents, Al and Marie Mawushi. Um, we still are collecting parish pledges. If you 
have not yet turned in your pledge and you do intend to pledge, please turn it into the office as soon as possible if you need a pledge form. There are some in the Memorial Hall right next to the bulletins. Um, also, that we have those available in the office as well. Um, there are a couple other announcements in the bulletin, particularly if you want to sign up for the altar flowers for some weekend. Uh, that list is still available in the Memorial Hall as well. Um, and you can... Uh, Whatever you give helps to underwrite the altered flowers that we get. So um, also one, one other thing, um, the final hymn today is uh, number 537. Some of you may have received the bulletin with an insert sheet uh, with clearer printing of the final hymn. If you have a page that is difficult to read and you didn't get the insert uh, for the last song, it will be number 537 in the blue hymnal. Now that's at the end, but just a reminder that now that the books are back in the pews, we do have those to fall back on. Are there any announcements from people here in church or via Zoom for the good of the community? And we want to express then our sincere sympathy to Sean and Heather Dalmaso and all of their family at the passing of Sean's mother, the very Reverend Judith Dalmaso. Uh, so we pray for her today and uh, we continue to keep her and all of them in our prayers for God's peace and consolation on you. If you would turn then in your bulletin to the top of page 16, and we will join together in praying the offertory prayer. Creator God, you provide food and drink to sustain us on this earth. Grant that this bread and wine may be the sacrament of our eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In your mercy, you so love the world that you sent your Son as our Redeemer, desiring that he should be like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By disobedience we lost your gifts of grace. Now through the obedience of Christ they are restored. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. or be seated. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread, and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. <clears throat> for those unable to receive. In union, blessed Jesus, with the Christian faithful across the world, gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We remind our visitors that in the Episcopal Church, all baptized Christians are welcome to receive Holy Communion. And just to explain, for those who may not be familiar, because of COVID, we've been using these little chalices. The precious blood's on the top and the host is on the bottom. So as you come to communion, I will say the body and blood of Christ, and you can answer amen. And then if you're on this side, I ask you to step over that way. If you're on this side, to step over that way. And as you step aside, you can turn it over, peel back the bottom, receive the body of Christ, and then turn it back over, peel back the top, receive the blood of Christ. And then on either side, there are small baskets lined with aluminum foil, and I ask you to deposit the empty container in those particular baskets.
Listen to God on the other side
The prayer after Holy Communion. Let us pray. Merciful God, whose love draws us in to share the one bread and the one cup, send us out to live as one in Christ and to work for the salvation of all. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Uh, again, if you do not have a clear copy of the final song, you can find it in the blue hymnal on number 537. in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.